What does this jug and this glass have to do with colour grading in DaVinci Resolve? We'll get to that in a second, but first it's flowchart time. So in Resolve you start off with your footage from your camera and then you create a timeline to edit your footage in and then you export it. It's this middle bit that we're going to talk about in this video. So let's say the water in this jug represents the data in your video file from your camera including colour and luminance information. This glass represents your final rendered exported video. And this middle jug here is your timeline in DaVinci Resolve. This is where you're going to do all of your editing. With this setup, we can easily fit all of the data from the camera into the timeline where we're going to be working. We then do our color grading with all of this data that's available to us in our timeline. And then when it comes to export our video, we easily have enough data to fill up our rendered videos output color space and luminance space. But if we set up our timeline in the wrong way, we're going to be color grading in a space that has limited data for color and luminance information. That means when it comes to export our video, we've only got half a glass now, we're missing out on important color information from the original video file here. That's because our working timeline color space here wasn't big enough and while we've been color grading, we've come up against the edges of this capacity. Let me clean up this mess and we'll head into Resolve. So we've got this footage in DaVinci Resolve. This is like the water in our starting jug. This footage was shot in the S Gamut 3 Cine color space with S Log 3 Gamma. We're going to be rendering this timeline to the Rec 709 color space with a gamma of 2.4. Now we need to make sure that this timeline has enough space in it as possible to hold all of the water from the footage so we don't lose valuable color and luminance data while we're color grading. To do this, we're going to do all of our color grading in the biggest possible space, and that's something called DaVinci wide gamut. So you can do what I'm about to show you with nodes, but for a simpler approach, come up to the file menu and open up project settings. Come across to the color management tab here, and in the color science dropdown, change this from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Uncheck this automatic color management tick box, and then set your output color space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. This output color space is for standard broadcast and uploading to things like YouTube. So this output color space is like our final glass. The next thing you're going to want to do is change this color processing mode from SDR Rec 709 to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. You're going to want to change these settings at the start of your project before you start editing or color grading. So will using this technique automatically make your grading and your final output video look so much more amazing than it would have done otherwise? The answer is probably no. So what's the point in using it? Well, there's three main reasons you might want to consider this approach. The first reason is that you can make all of your creative color grading decisions in this one DaVinci wide gamut color space. That means if your main deliverable was something like SDR Rec 709, but then the client wanted a HDR output or perhaps a version to output as an advert or trailer in a movie theatre, you could just change the output colour space, potentially make a few tweaks. But because you made all of your creative decisions in that DaVinci wide gamut colour space, you're not going to have to change the working timeline space, which means you're not going to have to do the entire colour grade all over again from scratch. The second reason you might want to consider this approach is if you're working with footage from multiple cameras or perhaps stock footage, you can get DaVinci Resolve to automatically map the color spaces of those cameras into the timeline working color space of DaVinci Wide Gamut. And because DaVinci Wide Gamut is the biggest color space, bigger than any camera can output, you're guaranteed that no matter what camera you're color grading, you're going to have a big enough jug to hold all of the data. The third reason you might want to consider this approach is if you're working with log footage, by using this color managed approach, you don't have to have color transform nodes in your actual color grading node graph. You can just concentrate on the actual artistic grade and not the technical conversions from your camera's log footage to DaVinci Wide Gamut and from DaVinci Wide Gamut to your export format such as Rec 709. Setting up a DaVinci Resolve color managed workflow and working with footage from different cameras is what you're going to learn in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.